radio show coming up real soon, or like maybe tomorrow morning, uh, where we're going to uh, look at things from a different kind of angle. Uh, you might uh, find that interesting. I'm sure many of you all will be up for work tomorrow, huh? The KJLH. Flip the collar down for the camera. Flip the collar. I look, I look much better. Oh, man. I feel like I failed. All right. Um, anybody got any questions or anything before we start off? I'm going to wait until Ed finishes and then I'm going to actually start the lecture. And I want to, uh, I want to, uh, uh, not miss anybody's anything. I don't know what went on before I got Was I aware of what was going on in Nigeria? Brother Ed, you, you catch it? Where you leaving? Oh, okay. What you need change for? I'm sorry, but I got change here in my pocket. Uh, the, uh, that's about Nigeria. And of course, you saw who the United States government sent to Nigeria. Just show you right. Uh, to uh, carry the uh, top uh, secret uh, message from the president. Uh, many times uh, these travels that uh, you'll contain envelopes. And these envelopes, uh, if you're appropriately commissioned, uh, have uh, immunity and uh, cannot be observed by anyone. Now you remember once before there was a phone call that was alleged by the whites that was about Jesse's son calling a guy in Nigeria about some oil. Okay, but one thing about a diplomat is they have bags that cannot be opened. I just don't want you to miss that because you might not know how it works. Uh, there's an article that uh, we'll get into. We talked a little bit about it uh, yesterday about the rabbis drug laundering the money from the diamond cartel. And uh, Brother Jamal got to review it earlier today uh, to see that they had an elaborate worldwide network of transferring drugs through diamond uh, cases and that they were using diamond money to have a never-ending source of money to purchase cocaine and this cocaine was being distributed in the major cities the rabbi connection uh, anyway anything about that you want to say about Nigeria uh, Jesse was accompanied by a uh, delegation of State Department and national security officials uh, Jesse has made several statements. Now he, he, he was empowered as a member of the State Department he carried the portfolio but he was accompanied also yes he, uh, he was accompanied by a guy named Walter Carrington this guy is very important he just got appointed ambassador to Nigeria and when I do Africa 94 on Wednesday, I'm going to show you uh, uh, when Randall Robinson surveyed the organizations on Africa, what Walter Carrington and Earl Edwin Doran did, they surveyed the leadership on Africa and the world. And those two surveys became the greater, uh, the, the uh, constituency for Africa project. And uh, in line with that uh, is Walter Carrington. He was the co-author of that through the Joint Center for Political Studies, is in the Washington, D.C. Boule and was just appointed ambassador to Nigeria. And he, in Washington, it was a big deal that he and Jesse were taking off together, uh, knowing what he represents in Washington, D.C. as being a part of the black bourgeoisie. He's uh, uh, definitely in the elitist cadre there. I'm sorry, go ahead. But then, to, then Jamal, to sum it up, Nigeria is Africa's richest nation, Africa's most populous nation. Nigeria has been targeted for massive destabilization. They're trying to put them in the same situation that they have in Central Africa. Uh, the whole IT and T boy, as Fela Kuti calls him, I International Teeth Teeth. IT and T boy. <laughs> most showed out Viola, who after the election of June 12, 1993, was annulled, ran to Great Britain, and ran to America, and asked them to put sanctions on Nigeria. Then goes back and declares himself to be president, gets in prison for treason, and so uh, Nigeria's been destabilized massively. So if Big Brother goes down, what is the likelihood of Nigeria then being able to step in and say, well, I will forward the progressive activity on the African continent for the 21st century. Nigeria, which is due to be the third most populous nation on the planet in the year 2060. Well, this a little side note to that. Based on Jesse's um, activities over there, can we conclude that he has 
in official yet unofficial position in uh, this administration? Uh, if he was in another country, he'd be called a minister without portfolio, meaning he is a minister of the government uh, without specific focus. Uh, he's used domestically Los Angeles, internationally Nigeria, uh, uh, any level they need. Uh, it's uh, readily available. Brother Tariq. Uh, also, a note to the Nigerian situation, uh, Rockefeller has been involved in Nigeria for over 40 years. They have an agricultural institute right outside of Lagos, and they know that you can grow anything and everything in Nigeria that could feed the entire uh, uh, continent of Africa if it were allowed to happen. So there are very strong oil interests, chemical interests, uh, hindering the development of uh, Nigeria as a, as a powerful nation in Africa, so we must know that. What is the significance of the working tools of masonry? What is the meaning of the... I'm sorry. Finish, Brother Tariq. Excuse me. Hey, you'll be here, uh, Brother Tariq, on Tuesday? Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Uh, what's, your, what's your focus we're tomorrow continuing, night? We're continuing on exposing uh, what, uh, what is coming down the pipe with the Health Security Act called vaccine, mandatory vaccinations. So we will be continuing our series on uh, vaccinations, why we should not take them, what the contents are, and what we can do to clean out if we've already been vaccinated. Uh, any other announcements? Of Freemasonry for initiation. But as a Christian, you were in spiritual darkness. When the Word of God says, as a Christian, you are a child of light. If you just joined us, we are investigating the ritual of the first three degrees of Freemasonry in order to answer the question, are the teachings of Freemasonry compatible with biblical Christianity?
was here, and he mentioned that uh, uh, in masonry that the electric slide, in fact, forms a square, and that that electric slide might mean more to them than, in fact, that it's just a dance they're out there doing. And uh, it drew attention to the fact that there's so, so, so many subtle, subliminal, uh, 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 codified uh, interconnections that we're affected by uh, that we have failed to give better credence to that much of the world is subversive. Uh, uh, we have watched uh, baseball and football games where uh, the coaches and the, are standing there giving signs and they're radiating things to others and we understand, we accept that baseball could have cold but we don't want to believe uh, that, that it's cold of the enemy. So we have always tried to decodify the enemy and we have burrowed deep into penetrating the enemy forces. The goal of this operation is to get to the wizard. There is someone at the bottom of this and they work in cooperation with others and they are unified on certain questions. They are anti-black. We do not vacillate on the question. They are anti-black. This is a anti-white situation. And it's not that there are all of the whites. Most of the whites guild is guild of acquiescence. Failure to affirmatively respond to what they know to have been right. But in fact, they would admit that they're weak and are under domination of other whites. Whites do dominate other whites. And we have failed to calculate that in our own strategy, and which will eventually help tie up the enemy as we prepare for leadership and responsibility. And so uh, we have picked this uh, organization called Sigma Pi Phi. Someone asked today on the radio, why is it that we should feel apprehensive about them? And I think that's an honorable statement because as we draw attention to things, and we talked about it when I was here last, that it's not always popular to have to be the one to stand up and forward an opinion that you give based upon certain facts that you've read. If everyone doesn't have the same facts when you state an opinion off of those facts, sometimes that may put you uh, 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 offset with others because we're using different stimuli to come to a conclusion. So if, if it becomes our responsibility to try to do the best we can to bring forth to you those networks which we perceive support the enemy. And it was right here in this room, and I don't need to say it a hundred times, uh, that we did the uh, first uh, uh, articulation of that there was such a thing called Sigma Pi Phi as they had met here in July of 1990 uh, in, uh, at uh, one of the downtown hotels next to the NAACP's convention. And since that time, we had penetrated by gathering most of all the information we possibly could to put that in the focus and led us to the moment of wanting to go to a convention to see exactly what it is. Maybe it is that these are amiable group of white men who accepted a cultural misnomer that they are Greek. And that that is not any indication of their desire to be Afrocentric. And so maybe we can are uh, just misreading the uniform that they're wearing. Uh, there are many people that we have that are pro-black, that are policemen or, or human relations specialists or something contradictory on the surface. So we don't hold one's uniform as the ultimate judgment of where one stands. But in this particular case of Sigma Pi Phi, we look then to the values of the organization. Oh, no. Oh. I hope this thing didn't go all the way back. Come and reenact part of the ritual tonight exactly as he did it in his lodge. Okay, that's right. Okay, uh, and so uh, we have come forth. Uh, with the best information we could about them, and there we look for their values. I uh, haven't found their history book. For those of you who haven't uh, seen or heard Boulay information in the past, uh, we have access or have the copies of their history book. Uh, and their history book is a document that every member must become familiar with and accept as their history and protect that history based upon certain tenets of the organization. Uh, this history book had several very significant pages in it, page 28, page 38, just to name a few. It's got tons of good information in it. Actually, in a way, it's really kind of boring, but I'm, I'm into the names thing. It's really a bunch of names. On this day, these 50 people formed this chapter, 
It's up to you to then do a survey of those people, and there you'll find another layer of information and find out how important just those paragraphs and names are without much opinion. It doesn't say, oh, it was great, we founded it this day. It says on this day they founded this, and they did that, and this is the charter, and that who was there to uh, ratify and certify them as new members in uh, the charters and so forth. Uh, it's laborious in many sense. The, uh, if you look at many of these books, they're not very exciting. But those names give us an opportunity to trace alliances. Alliances, loyalties, histories give us indicators about one's intentions. I was never in a Greek fraternity. Uh, and because of that, I had no understanding of whether or not it was secretly an African thing. I always thought maybe deep inside of this it was a black thing. And that it was just on the fake out. Uh, on one of the documents it says, why are, why are there Greeks? And they even said in their own book that they formed these organizations as a reaction to white racism. Now, I thought about that. That's a head. I could read you the quote, but I'll tell you the quote. And that they were a result that because they couldn't get into white Greek organizations, they would, in retaliation, form black Greek organizations. <laughs> Now wait just a minute. If the forefathers of them as the Greek thing are perpetrating the racism, what becomes an emulating moment in retaliation? I'm going to get even with you. Here, take my money. Yes, yes. I mean, it does, there's a contradiction there. But the question may mean that they do have a desire to be against them, but within the house they are in belief of the same ideology. And we draw attention to that because as we, each of these organizations have talked them all individually, they know at different moments members have raised, why don't we go comedic and this and that, and it's just not anything that's going to happen. No more than Ben can make the NAACP, which is a mule, be a thoroughbred. This just can't happen. And I insisted that we have to quit wasting our time repeating mistakes because we're making decisions not off of evidence. We're being emotional. And this emotion can, in fact, give the enemy more time to set up neutralization. We've, they've done it before. Many people have been ostracized and uh, upset for being frank about it. It's just an unfortunate moment. Uh, and so, uh, page 28 of that history book drew out the fact that the organization was based on the tenets of Skull and Bones at Yale. And for those of you who know these things, I'm sorry for being repetitious, but I must make the record correct. And that that tenant in Skull and Bones at Yale was an organization that used the skull and crossbones. And on the surface, that's a negative image. That, like Greek, doesn't seem worth emulation. You know, what is that? Imitation is the highest form of flattery? Check. So, the other part said, like the tenants of Skull and Bones at Yale, and I always stop there. I used to always leave off the part and Phi Beta Kappa. I didn't know much about Phi Beta Kappa. I didn't understand Phi Beta Kappa. But I want to read into the record a commentary from a young brother uh, that I went to uh, college with, a brother Brunson. Uh, I would recommend uh, you getting this book to add to your own uh, boule uh, information. It's called Frat and Soar, The African Origin of Greek Letter Organizations by James E. Brunson. And on the post have the four emblems of the four male and the four female. Uh, nowhere is the boule. He does have one paragraph mentioning the, that the big eight are superseded by a ninth. That's all in one paragraph. Like most of the history books of these organizations contain a paragraph that in 1904 there was another organization that was created. Uh, but in here, uh, for something that I didn't know, uh, many of you may have, uh, was a commentary about the roots and impact of Freemasonry in a series of things leading up to the origin of the Greek thing. And it says here, uh, for the record, in uh, 1778, uh, Phi Beta Kappa, the first Greek lettered fraternity, so Skull and Bones at Yale is in fact, if you read the book, if you, if you read this book here, the secret order uh, uh, of the, uh, the order, the secret cult of the order, or the bigger version is called America's Secret Establishment. And tell me, Jamal, I want to make sure we get these into the record. If you read that book, 
you know that there is an interconnection between skull and bones and something called the Illuminati based upon the fact that Skull and Bones Charter came from the University of Ingolstadt, the last known public uh, sighting of the Illuminati organization led by Adam Wiesbaugh. Uh, we once, at, 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 in, uh, a couple of weeks ago in D.C., had on the radio one of the LaRoche people, and we raised the question that in Sutton's book, he articulates Frederick Schiller as one of the assistants of Adam Wiesfeld in the Illuminati at the University of Ingolstadt. And we do have a copy of the tape, and they, on the tape, not only do not deny it, but suggest that the reason Schiller was in the organization was out of peer pressure. Oh, right. And that he, he did not accept any tenets of it. He was just in it. And that's, that's a deep level of commitment only to be quasi-supportive. What you need, brother? You're right. Uh, but uh, he mentions here that in 1778, Phi Beta Kappa, the first Greek letter fraternity, was established at William and Mary College in Virginia. Historian Richard Nelson, current uh, writes that Phi Beta Kappa's decision to develop and expand its ritual led them to come under the influence of masonry. As early as the 1750s, there was a Masonic Lodge in Williamsburg, Virginia. One of Phi Beta Kappa's founders, Thomas Smith, originally belonged to the Williamsburg Lodge, and in 1778, nine other members of this fraternity joined the Masons. It was through this affiliation that the Masonic Order with the Masonic Order that Phi Beta Kappa found models that they could adapt for the society, its grip, signs, and other rites. Now we got a daisy chain. Now we got one saying that Phi Beta Kappa linked with masonry to develop code work. We then know that the boule uh, connects itself to the tenets of Skull and Bones and Phi Beta Kappa, and both of them are steeped in code work. The uh, Skull and Bones is the 322 Society. And, of course, in Skull and Bones, there are certain rituals uh, that they do in terms of laying in a coffin, being reborn again, recreating the birth of the white man by wrestling each other butt naked in mud. Cave rituals. And that the, and that the mortality of man is always stressed to members so that they can be ruthless while on earth. Understanding the principle under their life that when you're dead, you're dead. There is no afterlife. Therefore, take what you can. You can colonize a country. You have that right because when you're dead, you're dead. It was greatly underestimated by the original people here in this land, as well as Africans in our land, the bestiality of the white man. We underestimated it. And we are continuously now trying to give them another chance when the issues and the information do not bear it out. But failure to come to a conclusion becomes what one avoids so that we can never get to the bottom of this. We must get to the bottom of the location of the wizard headquarters. And at the appropriate big wizard meeting that the appropriate action be taken so that all other nations would obey that those who control them no longer exist. So it's like free in the land of Oz, and they can take off the old uniforms and assume another personality. I remember Sister Nana Shashibi of the PAC in Washington always said that white money in Africa has prohibited Africa from developing its own personality. Right. And that's what dependence does. We're nothing of ourselves. And we struggle with this thing all the time. And it, too, has nothing to do with securing and attaching ourselves to finalize the enemy. Uh, for the record, again, so Phi Beta Kappa goes to the uh, Masons to get grip, signs, and other rights. The idea of expanding the society fraternity was initiated by Phi Beta Kappa's president, William Short, Jr., who was also a Mason. This expansion, which began in 1779, was founded on similar principles utilized in masonry. The original Phi Beta Kappa Society would be known as the Alpha Chapter, the equivalent number one in the so-called Greek alphabet. And each succeeding branch or chapter would be designated in the order of authorization by one of the successive letters of the Greek alphabet, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, etc. Ironically, that is exactly 
the way the Boule labels its chapters, for the founding chapter is Philadelphia Alpha, Chicago Beta, uh, 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 Gamma is uh, Baltimore, uh, 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 Epsilon is Washington DC, uh, Delta is uh, Memphis, Epsilon Washington DC, uh, Zeta is uh, New York, uh, and so we find in the labeling of the chapter structure, uh, and I guess uh, I can show you uh, how uh, that looks uh, for them. Now let's see if we got it easily showable. Yeah, it may not be in the book. Uh, no, that portion ain't in. I can't show it, but I, just how all the chapters go by succession. Uh, alpha, Beta, Gamma, Epsilon, Zeta. But it says this is the way Phi Beta Kappa chose to do itself. So, uh, not not really knowing the depth of the Phi Beta Kappa connection, I always focused on skull and bones. I'm only saying now I better understand how more interconnected it is with the white thing than I thought as I get these signals of that these secret oath-taking organizations under the cover are linking up and preparing to make a decisive moment in the world on behalf of their structures. I, I make to you that what I'm suggesting is that they're preparing for a fight this fight might not be the same fight that Rockefeller prepared for. This might be another fight. It might be two, three, four fights going on at once. It might be a Zionist fight. It might be a, 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 a white right wing, uh, a, a white Russian thing. It might be a white Rockefeller thing. It might be a Masonic thing. All these things may compete against each other. And somewhere in there, we got to sneak up the middle. Somewhere in this confusion that's about to come down, We've got to know what moments we can make to cap on their confusion. And they're overplaying our confusion to hide their own. There's confusion over Haiti. There's confusion over the Defense Department. There's confusion over the military industrial strategy. There's confusion over who's in and out on the New World Order move. There's confusion on their level, and they're protected by perpetrating confusion amongst us. Says uh, also, uh, just uh, for the record, um, uh, in the, uh, on the Phi Beta Kappa connection uh, was that uh, they go, uh, masonry in Europe and North America took rather parallel role. The racist attitudes towards blacks and the utilization of slavery, pathology clashed with knowledge of Egypt as a black civilization and foundation of masonry, meaning that all of this needed whites' contempt to be able to rationalize that they could perpetrate comedic things but disrespect the comedic ancestors. You. Now, in the secret order of the cult of uh, uh, the secret cult of the order, I prefer to call it America's secret establishment by Anthony Sutton again. Uh, there's this uh, in the short version on page 57. Uh, they're walking through the secret chambers of Skull and Bones. There was a raid, and they're walking through the secret chambers, and they say, entering the room C, immediately on the left is seen a bookcase which contains the Skull and Bones library including a complete set of Yale literature, handsomely bound college catalogs and books published by Bonesmen. Here, too, are the Constitution of the Phi Beta Kappa and a catalog of Scroll and Key Society containing a list of members down to 16, uh, 1868. So uh, right in the uh, primary moment of the library of the Skull and Bones headquarters is the Constitution to Phi Beta Kappa. Uh, a very precious copy of the Constitution, which means that the Skull and Bones Phi Beta Kappa connection is intimate. Those Skull and Bones chapters don't go Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Epsilon. They don't have that. Their chapters go by numbers similar to large numbers. And don't forget that B'nai B'rif is really the extension of Jewish fraternity. We have greatly underestimated the fact that it is the Anti-Deformation anti League of the B'nai B'rith. And each and every B'nai B'rith city is actually a large number. And in their internal literature, if you have the benefit of penetrating it, you will see the large numbers on it. Uh, whereas publicly, they don't radiate large numbers to non-members. But this is Jewish fraternity. And remember in the protocols, there was direct dialogue that they at a particular moment in time would infiltrate and take over white Anglo masonry and make it a tool of their own goal for a supranational government, 
of which we're on the verge of now as one country decides to invade another country based upon its perception of what's just. Here in the Scottish Rite, the Scottish Rite's magazine is the primary house organ of uh, masonry in this area, it's what they call the southern districts, the 33 southern states, and this Scottish Rite magazine is their primary uh, uh, focus. There's a, a portion here called Current Interest, Masonic Unity in Maryland. And they show, this is on the uh, 33rd Street in Baltimore, uh, where uh, the Shriners and the Scottish Rite linked up for joint membership. The Grand Master of Masons in Maryland, M.W. M. W. Uh, Master Warden, uh, William Clark, uh, the uh, potentate of the Balumi Temple, Brother Wilbur Jensen, and Sovereign Grand Inspector General Marilyn Bernard Rotman, united in an effort to stimulate membership and interest in masonry throughout the state of Maryland. The foundation of this endeavor was a combination package offering membership in the Scottish Rite and the Shrine simultaneously. Beginning in the afternoon of November 5th, 93, and concluding in 24 hours the following day, 232nd degree Scottish Rite members were created in Baltimore Scottish Rite Temple. Candidates from four or five other valleys in Maryland gathered for participation in this first time historic event, whereby the three Masonic fraternities pooled their particular talents to keep masonry on the move. And on the next page, emphasized in dark print, emphasized in dark print on the next page to conclude the article. It says, in Maryland, a dedicated effort is underway to enjoin all the appended bodies of masonry to pool their Masonic knowledge, expertise, and talent in the daily search to promote the image of masonry worldwide. In dark print, we have been too quiet for too long. In dark print. Maryland's Freemasonry is on the move. Let's keep the momentum going with the Scottish Rite leading the way. We have been too quiet for too long. That suggests some proactive moment for them. These unifying things, remember I mentioned four Prince Hall state lodges have unified with the white Scottish Rite lodges and that those that have not have only found that there's a problem over how do we share the money. That's very important. Now, I wanted to show here for the record the process by which one accepts the ritual. The reenactment of the ritual. You will explain what Masonic authorities say is the deeper meaning of the legend. Please listen. Worshipful Master, I'm David Bruce, Brother Smith. Brother Smith, this is our Worshipful Master. Brother Smith, what? All the secrets belonging to this degree. Brother Smith. Uh, Hold on just a second. Well, maybe I better just not have to hold it up there. No, no, it's, it's on the speaker, brother. It is? It's already on the speaker. Oh, Where are y'all talking about? Okay, go on crazy. I'll show you, boy. Don't think somebody will do it. We'll get the remote control stick. Uh, yeah. Oh, here it is, right here, brother. I just need the, uh, where's the, uh, tracking, is tracking on here? One, no. suppose from the jewelry you were about tonight, you are a master mason, well, acquainted with all the secrets belonging to this degree. Here for you. But it is my duty to inform you, Which such is not the case. You have a rough and dangerous road to travel as a test of your fidelity in keeping... Here we go. Oh, hold on now, it might be just me pushing the thing. No, it's got to track. Okay, there we go. Exactly as he did it in his lodge. After you see the reenactment of the ritual, he will explain what Masonic authorities say is the deeper meaning of the legend. Please listen. Worshipful Master, I can introduce Brother Smith. Brother Smith, this is our Worshipful Master. Brother Smith, one might suppose... ...who you were about. ...which belonging to this degree. But it is... 
try ejecting that way. As a test of your fidelity in keeping secret that which has been communicated to you. In your travels, you will be beset by ruffians. Perhaps murder, an instance, has been known. You will therefore suffer yourself again to be hoodwinked and conducted to the altar where you may offer up your devotions either mentally or orally. And when you have finished, you will rise, you will signify the same by rising, remembering he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. This is now just to identify the process by which one's obligations become not, at, not, not ours. Notice that there's someone there to assist this person in the process of coming across because it's always this person that is equally threatened if the initiate uh, 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 threatens the secrets then his mentor is as equally in jeopardy. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun... Right now, in this portion of the ritual of the third degree of Freemasonry, the candidate has symbolically become Hiram Abib. His walking around the altar symbolizes his journey through life and he's hearing scripture from the book of Ecclesiastes. In a moment, the candidate will encounter ruffians on his journey who will threaten and eventually kill him, the meaning of which will be explained later by former worshipful master, Mr. Jack Harris. And the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return to God who gave it. Grandmaster Hiram Abib, I am glad to meet you thus alone. You have long promised us the secrets of a master mason. Behold, the temple is almost completed, and we have not yet received them. Give me the secrets of a master mason. This is an unusual way of manner of asking. Neither is it the time and place. Wait until the temple is finished, and then, if worthy, you will receive the secrets. Give me the secrets of a master mason, or I will take your life. I cannot. Neither can they be given except in the presence of three. Solomon, king of Israel, Hiram, king of Tyre, and myself. Give me the secrets of a master mason, or I will take your life upon this spot. My life, but not the secrets. And die. Oh. Grandmaster Hiram Abbey, give me the secrets of a master mason. I cannot. This neither is satisfactory. Give me the secrets of a master mason, or I'll take your life. I will not. Give me the secrets of a master mason, or I'll take your life on this spot. My life, but not the secrets. Then die! Give me the secrets of the Master Mason. I cannot. Give me the secrets of the Master Mason, or I'll take your life. I will not. Give me the secrets of the Master Mason, or I'll take your life on this spot. My life, but not the secrets. Then die. Right, good right. <laughs> Companions, what hard crime we had committed. We have murdered our Grand Master Hiram Abi. What shall we do with the body? Let us take it a westerly course. And bury it at the brow of a hill, some six feet two east and west, and six feet perpendicularly, at the head of which we will plant a sprig of acacia, that the place may be here unknown. Let us make our escape. Stay with us, for after this break, we will continue with the third degree of free... There's, a, there's another uh, ritual, I believe, that uh, comes in after this. Anybody got any impressions of that, a comment, commentary, something you saw? Babylonian, Babylonian yeah. Talmud and Scholarship. The Pharisees, the Book of the Pharisees, that's what this is all about. It takes us back to the, to the origin of... Oh, Lord, my God. Is... Sorry. Uh, Brother Astonu. That is extremely similar to the initiation uh, ritual uh, for the Kappa Alpha Psi. What? A lot of similarities. 
A lot of similarities. Now, I, I've never, uh, I've asked many of the members uh, what is uh, what is their uh, particular ritual like. That I mentioned to you in regards to the boule that one of the documents that we have yet to acquire is their ritual book. It's very important to us to get this ritual book because we need to know what level of obligation they have given the Greek thing. Uh, we do know this. Remember this. This is the Boule song, and the Boule song gives you indications of uh, Boule resistance. I mean, to what level or to what depth are they uh, uh, this uh, counter organization? From far and near, you have traveled here over rock, over rough and rocky road, to reach the open portals of Sigma Pi Phi, breast of old. Our hearts, our homes, to you belong, and glad we are that you have come to share our fellowship song, to share our fellowship song. Each Archon who has dared to taste of the cup that threatened death. Now somewhere I think that line has something to do with the ritual. The cup that threatened death. Well, to where does one lift this cup and drink on the spirit that that would be their blood that would be spilled, that they would drink? for anyone that would utter the secrets of the boule. Again, you're not told about them because they chose to. You've been told because we've chose to and been persistent in spite of the dehumanization of the project. E, uh, each Archon who has dared to taste of the cup that threatened death, dear Sigma Pi Phi will defend with his life and dying breath. Two now sentences that deal with death over ritual. Third threat. Should for any a Greek assail, his cunning words shall not avail. Our ears are deaf to envy's tale, ever deaf to envy's tale. Though elsewhere bickerings annoy, here at least our peace and joy, where friendships built on faith abound, Strife and discord near are found. Then drink together, Archons dear, the cup of fellowship and cheer. For as the apple of the eye is to us, Sigma Pi Phi. I, I believe that within that song is dialogue or reference to the ritual process, something we have yet to decodify. Uh, one of our uh, most important decodifications was the Grecian Sphinx, the animal that we saw on their logo, which for much time we thought was a griffin, or a gargoyle, an overseer, or a watcher, or a protector, which in fact is what this, as they call it by constitution, Grecian Sphinx really is. It is a guardian. And as a guardian, it protects something which we believe is in the urn that the right paw sits over. That right paw sits over an urn. And in a better picture of the urn, inside is a circle within a circle. That circle within a circle is, I have felt, the symbol of the Rhodes Rothschild Secret Society. The Rhodes Rothschild Secret Society are those last responsible to deliver the phase of worldwide order, and their responsibility is the final phase, the Rothschild-Rockefeller-Oppenheimer connection. But they're just not arbitrary. I believe that they're the potentates over societies and that they too don the robes and go through the rituals, which is why, if you remember in the tape uh, back there, in fact, uh, Brother Ed, all the Boulay-related tapes are $25 today. Boulay, what's your maiden's name? What's your mother's maiden name? Uh, Boulay revisited the uh, meanings translated, which is uh, a look at these symbols and stuff with Brother Ashwa Kwesi special message to the Boule, which is through the Boule history book, and uh, the Boule convention. That's when we busted in the Boule meeting. That's when we busted in the Boule meeting in uh, the Ritz-Carlton in October, the regional meeting, and where David Rockefeller was the only white man sitting there addressing the group. So we do know that on a level, David Rockefeller knows more about that organization than most of the black people that it claims it represents, because he knew to be there and they didn't, or weren't even invited or sought to be there. So we give knowledge to that. This Grecian Sphinx, of course, has the tail of an S. 
Sigma, Pi Phi are the encryptions between it. I mentioned the other night that they've always been murky about what these two symbols are in between, and it was not until we got to the convention that we were able to see close up on their own bulletin boards precise showings of that symbol between Sigma Pi Phi, and this is what it is. Can you tell me when I can turn over. And you got to call me if I miss you. Just call me. Okay. This is what was up close in there. Squares. Nine squares in all. Three squares over three squares over three squares. Now that means sigma pi phi. And we know that the number of the boule is nine. Four male, four female, and the godfather, the boule. Uh, when you look up. Uh, the word sire, and you look up the word archon, you'll see a uh, four-legged mammal, and I don't know if the brother's here who did that uh, last time we was here, the four-legged mammal keyed on the number nine. And uh, here are those nine squares. Uh, uh, denied when most documents are released by the organization, but only shown at the convention. That was the first time we saw. What does that mean? I do understand that nine is relevant, the three by three by three, I don't quite understand. Maybe some of you uh, know more about what those three squares over three squares over three squares might mean. Uh, but obviously it shows that there's more information and more penetration necessary. But we'd have never gotten this if we didn't step up and go to the convention. We had to go there to hear it or to see it. And uh, uh, we know that this griffin or gargoyle, like you have Griffin Park up here, where the Boulay met up at the Greek Theater in 1941 here in L.A., met at the Greek Theater. And, of course, that's Griffin Park, and the griffin or the gargoyle or the gatekeeper is what the Boulay is. They are the protector or the buffer of the Rhodes Rothschild Secret Society, which is a circle within a circle, which is, in fact, inside the urn when you see an appropriate copy of the urn, as this one is, inside of it is the circle within a circle, which is what their right paw uh, lays over the portal of, or keeps secret. I believe that that right paw, which is how they take their oath, uh, is uh, keeping over the urn, which is what they keep secret from the masses of the people. Knowledge of uh, what the boule does, I contend, is keep knowledge of who is the ultimate in authority secret so that they can assist them and that through assisting them, they believe they are somehow assisting us. Now, uh, and of course, this is their magazine, the Boulay Journal. comes out every three months. Boulay is a Greek word. It means advisors to the king. Question arises, who is the king? And that is a pursuit. We must, when Rockefeller showed up at the meeting, I already feel he's king in a North American connection. Not the most powerful. He's one of those most powerful whom the others have accepted as the chairman of the board. Every group, a board of directors, has a chairman. It may be that their skill is keeping the members uh, 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 cooperating. Doesn't mean that they even dictate. But they may, in certain moments, contain ultimate or veto authority for the general good of the group and that the group accepted its leadership. But I also believe that the Rockefellers have for many years also presided over secret structures from which we've yet to be able to carefully articulate. And when we do, we will explain it. That's, that's what we do for you. We're the vacuum cleaners. Uh, uh, the Boule uh, meets every two years annually. I mean, every two years for the big convention, regional conventions every year. Every city has a local chapter. We have the LA names up here for those of you who've never been to a lecture before. Uh, and it, uh, right in the closing, uh, we'll mention that. Uh, uh, the organization itself uh, puts out a roster, Sigma Pi Phi Fraternity, roster of archons. Archon uh, is what each member is. Uh, it says in Homeric times, an archon's role was to relieve the king of his civic duties. To re it's like the king has to take over the kingdom to become king. But eventually, when he gets the kingdom under control, he needs people to assist him in governing it. And the concept is that this is the Negro's government connection. Not to the government or governing connection. Uh, we also know that in one of the Boulay history books, uh, that it was uh, articulated in a tribute to Charles Wesley in 1987, 
that there was a parallel on each side of the page. One was Alfred Lord Tennyson's dialogue about the fair order of the table round. And on this side was Charles Wesley's commentary about the order of the table round. And we know that this word round table means something, and you ain't just jacking off in some boule journal talking about round table and hooking up with Alfred Tennyson, some dead white poet of the 1700s or something, uh, who wrote the Ode to Arthur or King Arthur. Which he was a King Arthur specialist. You just ain't jacking off on that up in a black book, a black organization structure, unless it has symbolic meaning. And we believe that that fair order of the table round association means that they serve the round table group. The round table group is the Rhodes Rothschild Secret Society. Some of you know of the round table group through John Coleman's book, The Committee of 300. Some of you know the round table group through none dare call a conspiracy in the Rockefeller file, or as Jamal has it in the capitalist conspiracy. These organizations uh, are represented in many books. They are mentioned. Uh, uh, Imperial Brain Trust, Trilateralism, uh, uh, the Invisible Government. Uh, each of them mentioned this Royal Institute for International Affairs in Britain, the Council on Foreign Relations. These are the semi-secret aspects of these secret societies, but the Round Table Group, started in the late 1800s by Cecil Rhodes and Lord Rothschild, was responsible for the last phase of development of bringing on worldwide supremacy, which is why we have had to step out stronger in trying to assure that focus always remains towards the enemy. Uh, so the theory is that the Boule is just not an idle group of black men doing Greek ritual, that they have in fact been given a role, granted a role, have a specific seat at the table of power. You've seen them meetings in the White House and they got all of the key cabinet people sitting in the main chairs or it's a shot of the uh, Senate of the House on C-SPAN you see the senator sitting in the front row. Who be behind them? Who be behind the cabinet directors in the meetings? Their assistants. And that's the boule. They sit behind. They in the fart lane. And now... This round table group, the circle within a circle, circle of initiates, association of helpers, then you have the boule, guarding the white man from the black people. And that's my contention. Uh, now let me go forth a little bit more with uh, uh, material from the uh, uh, convention. Yes, Brother Keith. I just want to ask a brief question. You say you had entered a meeting and David Rockefeller where was there. I'm just curious, were they securing him that day? He was not secured at all. In fact, hotel personnel had described that Rockefeller holds meetings at the Ritz-Carlton at Pentagon City, which is just across the bridge from D.C. He holds meetings there very often uh, as a secure location for himself. You know, the Ritz-Carlton is not street available or street accessible. It's in a mall. It's in a shopping mall. It's kind of tucked inside of something. And that Rockefeller, who has never been articulated effectively enough by us, the victims, can walk right down South Central where nobody know who he was because we've never been taught to know who he was. David Duke, we know. Uh, we know uh, some little right-wing racist guy, some uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. We, we, know, we would know uh, 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 Alligator Rockefeller if we saw him. And that's where face perceptions have to come in, where we go forward and radiate on the faces. We must push those faces into the forefront like they tried to put faces of our people to human dehumanize them all over the front uh, to try to uh, uh, put them down. Anybody have any questions about the boule? I want to make sure uh, that those of you, and I see some of you for the first time, uh, get any fill-in that you need. Any, anybody uh, got any questions? Yes, sister. This is not a question, but a comment. The Warsite Temple that was established by Noble Ju Ali, it carried a circle seven, which is the circle within the seven, the circle within the seven, a circle within the circle. So could you explain the significance of that in terms of the neighborhood? I, I think that's important because what we really have in the highest form of flattery in reality is white imitation of ancient comedic things. And that the noble Drew Ali and the Morris Science Temple understand the comedic relationship of those secrets. Whites have come along, uh, Johnny come years later, and tried to emulate those things. Whites uh, uh, got Albert Pike and all their other whites re, uh, uh, what do we call it, uh, um, 
are rewriting the uh, meanings of things that they didn't create. So they utilize the circle within a circle, understanding it for the power and the understanding that it radiates, which came from the original people. They understand that. They look up and emulate those things. Part of their arrogance and brutality and weakness is, is that given such great honor to such science, they disrespect the bearers of the science, and that's a violation. How would I, why would I want to kill the baby of anyone uh, uh, of, of righteous way? Uh, uh, if I thought you was great, why would I greet your baby with death? So there's part of their basis of their racial context, which makes them a beast, a cave dweller, uh, an uh, insensitive barbarian who will take any and everything if we tolerate it. Yes, brother. Yeah, I just wanted to follow up on what she said. Um, Maybe I'll I, stand up so I can hit you. Yeah, I, I just found out that a um, brother uh, had attended a symposium and they had mentioned that Hitler was a student of uh, Madame Blavatsky. Right. And to bring that into focus, yeah, Blavatsky, she, I don't know who she is. Yeah, Blavatsky is a uh, was a student of, of the mystery school, which is what comes from uh, from Kemet. That's ours, and she uh, she was one of the one of the teachers of uh, of the commission uh, mystery system, and she wrote the book uh, Isis Unveiled and Isis Unveiled and other books that that teach the uh, the meta metaphysical uh, aspect of uh, commission study. So Hitler was a student of her. So just wanted to reinforce that they know what our uh, history is, and they know that um, they know about the spiritual level of the ancient uh, Egyptians, but they have paganized it and used it for evil to be able to control and set up their system of uh, world control around the uh, around the world. Yes. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, now I want to show you something that we found at the George Washington Masonic Memorial Temple. Uh, uh, conference. Okay. Even that's the uh, interview. Were. And even though they were about the Boulay Conference. And I think that the way I <coughs> take this back was that's Brother Hebrew. He was the one that was meeting with the Grand Sire Archon. I was questioning him and Brother Ed. He's standing there. We're in uh, Arlington, Virginia. You remember this, Brother Ed? And we did a little interview. I had tipped to this brother that I was going to have a violent demonstration at the last night of the Boulay's meeting. And that I was tucked away with busloads of people waiting to invade the hotel. I didn't tell Brother Ed or any of the other people that I had around there anything about this. I only told this one brother. So while Brother Ed is standing around the lobby, a place where we always stood during the convention, which would be like this area here, all of a sudden the Boulay people come out and tell Ed and the sister and the brothers and the others sitting around that they've got to move away because they heard it's a big violent demonstration coming and they want to clear all our friends out the hallway where they've been for the four or five days of the convention. And that's me interviewing the brother, reminding him that isn't it strange Brother Ed and the others were approached that this demonstration was coming when the only person I ever told was you. Jack. Jack. Oh, it's great work, great work. This is the same brother who we have on videotape who met with the Grand Sire Archon of the Boule at Gusty's Restaurant on 18th and M. And I'm going to have to put it up on the record so you can see it to enter it into that Brother Ed. We're at the George Washington Masonic Temple. It's a 360-foot tall building. I wonder why. Uh, and it has floors giving honor to masonry. We've talked about it before. But we went there to put on tape certain things. See, the Knights of Templar, when we busted in on the Boule meeting, which is in that uh, uh, videotape with my picture on it, one of the Boule members mentioned that their ritual is similar to that of the Knights of Templar. It deals a lot more with allegory and dialogue than uh, physical activity, okay? And, and so they have to go through a series of lessons and so forth. And within that context, and it's, it's not good to really run a, a machine that way, so I'm going to uh, stop it and run it backwards. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so in there, we went to look for aprons. We needed to show you and put into the record this interconnection thing. We're now gone through skull and bones, Phi Beta Sigma, Phi Beta Kappa. Uh, uh, of course, the four male are the alphas, kappas, uh, uh, omegas, and uh, Phi Beta Sigmas. Uh, the uh, AKAs, the deltas, the uh, Sigma Gamma Rolls, and the, um, and the uh, Zeta Phi Beta. Uh, and all of those four male, four female, the boule make nine. 
and that they have these interconnections. Yes, brother. If all the Europeans were in race, what would be some poetry prohibition? If all the what? should be able to be self-defining. Uh, what one does when one's burden has been removed becomes how one responsibly uses freedom. I have suggested that in a real revolution, this is uh, just to show you what happened, uh, I sent the video camera up on the last night, that's the boule doing the electric slide, but it didn't come out. Somehow the video looked like it had a scrambler on it. We believe somebody may have used some equipment on us, scrambled the video. That's actually them doing the electric slide, but you can't see it. Let me see if there's a slow motion on here. What was the question, brother? The question that the brother asked over there was about what was the role of black people, uh, if, I'm, if I'm correct, what is the role of the colored people uh, when uh, the whites have been removed? Is that what you said? Correct? And I was uh, alluding to the fact that how one responds when one's burden is alleviated depends on how one is responsible with the freedom that they have access to. It's part of the maturity of being an adult, uh, is how one uses these things. And so, uh, in this particular case, I'm just gonna let that run. In uh, this particular case, uh, I've always suggested that we should spend much of our time designing formats, designing formats to respond to moments when there's a leadership crisis and we, I must be responsible for everything, the paving of the streets, the fixing of the curbs, the trimming of the trees, the designing of the traffic lights, the timing of the lights, the control of the airport. Maybe they got the planes coming in every 30 seconds, maybe we want them in every 20 seconds. That's right. These are decisions that the revolution must make. But most are not thinking this way because they have not thought of life without the white man. They do not believe that the white man will ever be defeated. Uh, Keedy, where was that? Auto uh, track. Right here? Auto track right above there. Up and down, auto track. Okay. In about three okay. times. It'll... Okay. So, so we went here to the George Washington Masonic Temple. We also went to the uh, uh, House of the Mother Supreme, which is where Albert Pike is buried. And we went there to find symbolism that we could share with you to try to expose the interconnections between now Boule and uh, 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 Skull and Bones and Phi Beta Kappa and Round Table Group, etc. These interconnections are important because the concept of the trial of the oath takers is that at some moment when we believe we have the most substantial evidence, when we believe that our military apparatus is well prepared above the ground and below, then we will begin to exert influence upon those who we believe have betrayed us, and the trial of the oath takers will commence. Check. Now this is the George Washington, um, um, George Washington Masonic Temple. This is the hallway. It's recreating the original laying of the cornerstone of the, uh, Capitol building. Remember the Capitol building that sits on the money is a cornerstone of masonry. Masonry. This is a, that's the cornerstone of Freedom Hall at where Albert Pike is buried and there is a slab from the, the Capitol building. Now they're very much in the cornerstones as the adjoining moment of a building, the central, the, the core of a building. Now, at different times, you'll hear the white tour guide. Uh, you're allowed to. Uh, you're allowed to bring. Uh, that's the only picture George Washington ever posed for, and as you can see, it looks nothing like the dollar bill, which raised the question that Adam Weiss fault actually had in the in the crackdown on the Illuminati left Europe and came to America and assumed the body of George Washington. Thomas Paine wrote a letter to George Washington saying, I believe you're an impersonator. You're not looking or acting like the Washington that we know. Thomas Paine was eventually incarcerated in France and was one of the only American revolutionaries that had a bad career after victory. 
pastor can come out. That but this is the white tour guide. Now, interestingly enough, I haven't been in this building in a year and a half. I went there with my friends. We're going around, and he looks up and says, oh, yeah, this is a troublemaker right here. <laughs> and he goes to a certain book. Talking about proofs of a conspiracy or something, it says it's your book over here. And it was a book of a guy they killed on the conspiracy of masonry. Yeah, that a veil threat. But that's all right though. I think that's what you call a mutual business. Because I we have made clear to them that we are of a higher order. That we lay claim on the secrets that they're perpetrating. And at one point we're going to clash. So the white guy makes a point of saying some people are kind of born with the knowledge. We understand that they might not have gone through the rituals, but that they have the knowledge and we respect them as having the knowledge without ceremony. That was an interesting thing too. Interesting dialogue. Albert Pike is buried right behind this wall. That's, that's his grave right there. This is what they call the great staircase. This is walking into the lobby of the George Washington Masonic Temple. This is seven blocks down from the White House on 16th Street in Washington, D.C. Of course, there's been a big fight to remove this statue from Judiciary Square. Square. Judiciary Square. And of course, the Judiciary is a Masonic creation, along with the three branches of government, executive, legislative, and judicial. Ain't that right, Brother Man? I know Brother Man, no. We're sure you're right. <laughs> now, this is the coming in. It says, Slave Frater. There on the table means welcome brother, and they have two phoenixes with the wings out on the table greeting you coming in. Now check this out. This is the last known king of Hawaii. No, no, this is the new guy. This is the new Shriner man. He's from Little Rock, Arkansas, and they say the Shriner convention has to be held in the head man's place, but the hotels aren't big enough there, so they're going to put it in uh, Indianapolis. He's the president head of the Shriners uh, uh, America wide. Uh, they have Bibles opened up, put in books. At different times we go up on the Bible, which is in case to see what pages that they have in fact laid out. And so we wanted to get on the camera different pages. Of course, if we would have freeze framed this, you could read carefully, like at different times they have the Song of Solomon. And, and the I'm black, I'm black, I'm real black, being in a building with all whites. Again, they give honor that they know it's the black man and woman. And they give pride in the fact of killing them is success. You see, it is not that they don't know who you are. It's that they kill you and know who you are, which is what gives them honor. Don't you underestimate that. Don't get caught trying to convince them there's much evidence. Guy, I said, who is Solomon? He said, he a black man. That's the tour guide. And I said, well, what's up with that? He said, yeah, Haley Selassie is his great-grandson, too. There's a white man standing in the temple telling us this. This is uh, the Knights of Templar apron in the Masonic Lodge. And what's the Knights of Templar apron got the skull and crossbones on it? Why? Because skull and crossbones emulates the Knights of Templar, which is interconnected into the Illuminati. Go back and see how the Knights of Templar were destroyed, 1314. Jacques de Molay, what Clinton is, a senior de Molay. He's the only president who was ever a senior de Molay. That's the Masonic white youth organization. This is, they have a parable there about Moses at the burning bush. Moses at the burning bush is the logo for the University of Kansas, which strategically sits right in the middle of America. They have a line there, and they say, this is the middle of America, right here. There are more Rhodes Scholars from the University of Kansas than any other university in America, including Harvard and Yale. Why University of Kansas? Why Moses and the burning bush as the school's logo, which is a religious symbol for a state school? And right in the center of the campus is a huge statue, a 25-foot black, black statue of a Moses sitting in for a chapel which has a burning bush as the stained glass window. I've got it on videotape. At one point, I'll bring it. No, I, I kick something. I, 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 at one point, I'll bring it and hook these together for you. The important thing is I wanted to show you what those aprons look like. Lafayette gave George Washington his first apron, his skull and crossbones apron. What does the skull and crossbones have to do with skull and bones, the Knights of Templar, the Illuminati, the Masons, the Phi Beta Kappa, and the Boule, and the Alphas, the Kappas, the Omegas, the Qs, the Zetas, the Sigma Gamma Rose, the Alphas, and the Deltas. What does it have to do with all of that? This is a statue that they have there on the Knights of Templar floor where a white man, Jesus, leans up to the great God, and the great God got a black hand. Do you see that? Let me go back. Do you see that? 
And it's funny, we asked him, say, well, what is that? What is that up there? He said, that's God's hand. I think Ed was the one who asked him, say, what, what is that up there? He said, oh, that's God's hand coming down from the sky. These are all white. It's a white institution. It's a million dollar institution. Look at this. Oh, maybe I should put this. There it is. It's coming. There it is. With my gun. Right there. That's right. So you're right. That's right. That's some heavy business. That's some heavy business. Now, what is it that they're doing? What are they doing? Because then here comes Bill Cooper. Here comes uh, 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 Ralph Epperson. Here comes uh, William Steele. Here come the hunky books. And the hunky books say that Osiris, Horus, Isis, and the original black thing is really all pagan thing. By articulating and making the ancient comedic things pagan, we did not call them Osiris, Horus, Isis. It was the Greeks who renamed those things, and you all know better than I, who renamed those original comedic things, and then Albert Pike even began to name them and include them in his rituals. The whites who are coming against Albert Pike condemn Osiris, Horus, Isis, Ra as paganism based upon Albert Pike having radiated it. We say Pike didn't create it and he's disqualified from being able to radiate it because it ain't his. Therefore, the process by which they are dehumanizing the ancient comedic thing is allowing the white Christian community to accept that yes, it's not that white man, but no, it ain't the black man. So you gotta check out the, they got a double move. And that and that hunky, dirty, low down white boy that come up in here. What's his name? Anthony Hillier. Anthony and my people just beat him up in Vegas. So he went down to Vegas. They jumped him real strong, running around the black community doing whatever he think he's doing. I don't know, but I don't like it. Yeah, and he got some brothers with him too. Got a look. Lies about the black man being uh, on the list of uh, destruction. Well, that is true, no, but, I mean, that, that but we don't need him to be running around telling us what some other hunkies think. Go fight the hunkies for us then. Right. We've always said whites who want to support us can attack and dehumanize and destruct other whites. Right. And bring us the scalps. We'll pay for scalps. <laughs> Switch this thing around here. But we, we, we take this as a position that help from them must be exclusive beyond our neighborhoods. And I say the same for the LaRoches, and I feel the same about the Fulanis. And I say that because I don't trust them. I don't. Now, this is the Knights of Templar floor. The next floor, on the ninth floor, the guy was getting close to closing. The guy didn't want to take us there. But on the ninth floor is the, uh, what they call the, uh, the Tall Cedars of Lebanon. Uh, floor, the, the King Solomon's Temple. It's the ninth floor. This is the top floor of the George Washington Masonic Temple in Alexandria, Virginia. Right across from Washington National Airport. You can see it from the airport. It looks like a huge, uh, different type of looking pyramid. Now, on this ninth floor, which is the Solomon floor, you'll see that, now remember, the Grecian Sphinx is the number nine. Now here we go to the ninth floor of the White Masonic Temple. Okay, now we're going up to the ninth floor right now, and I'm sure that you will get to When you get up there, you can walk around the outside, but I didn't want to go outside. I wanted to get, that, get this on the camera. I had to get that on the camera. These are, in this particular display, the guardians to Solomon's temple. Now think about that. I'm an advisor to the king. I'm a Grecian Sphinx. How similar does that look to this? Show you right. Show you right. You've been there. And there are nine of these leading up a stairway of nine. And then they reduplicate the demonstration where Solomon is going to kill the woman's baby. And then the other woman whose real baby it is says, well, no, let her keep the baby rather than let the baby be killed. And they knock out that allegory over this display guarded by the Grecian Sphinxes. And I asked the guy, I said, what is that over there? And the hunky said, I don't know. Now they all over the walls, all that's up there is this here. He said, I don't know. I said, come on now, man, you know what it is. He said, well, it look a little to me like a griffin. So well, what is that? And if the griffin is the guard.
guardian, why is that Griffin Park up there on the hill of Hollywood? You remember we came in before when we translated through the dictionary of symbols, Holly is the German word for hell or cave. Cave wood is protected. But that might be the gate of hell right up the top of Griffin Park. It might be some shit deep down in the mountain, which is why it's a big earthquake of shit coming, because the shit gonna come up out of there. <laughs> That's sure you're right. Y'all will greatly underestimate that shit when the shit show up. You can say, that damn Copley boy told us some shit was coming up out of here. <laughs> no goddamn earthquake. Now excuse my language. That's it. Use that word. Good luck. <laughs> Listen to the white guy. He's talking. I'm trying to get his dialogue on the camera. Look at what they got sitting there. Look, I even how the how the lights I laid with triangle leading up the stairway to the reduplication of Solomon's temple with the sphinxes on the side as well. You hear what he's saying? It's three facing north, three facing south, three facing east, three facing west, representing the twelve tribes of Israel. Seven is a holy number in the Masonic order. This right here, there's nothing secret about it. It's the whole story of the Masonic order. The king that King Solomon was a just man, but King Solomon had his fault. Like, you know, every man has faults. King Solomon, he too had his faults. He was what we call a womanizer. Uh, the of many men. <laughs> <laughs> so you're right. That's the King Arthur moral to the story was that Arthur fell for Genevieve. And that blew his thing. And so there's a dialogue in all of these societies warning the men about the parable of King Arthur or other men who fell through women. I don't know why it's there, but it's that it's there. It might be a wise lesson. Great man. But uh, King Solomon was a good man, but you know, every man, that proved one thing, didn't it? That King Solomon was human. That's right. That's right. Now, even the light switch goes up to a triangle. Now they have this reduplication of the building of Solomon's temple in a mural that goes across the wall. And each different scenario is like eight million different things happening on this mural. It's not a it's not a whiff picture. It's a individual things going on in a picture. One of these pictures, you see what? A blue thing, a blue shit speaks, I thought that was one of Yeah, I got the camera in my hand. I don't want to turn it off. I want to move to another spot to get another shot. He's trying to get us off the floor. <laughs> if you want to see some speech, you know where Louisiana Avenue is? That's Albert Pike State. You know where Union Station between you yeah. Right there at the Artesia Life Insurance Company. They have two of the best looking stinks. That they represent power and wisdom. Power. I tell you how white people, when they talk about power, they always be lowering it down. We said power. They said power. They got all of it, right? It's all over them. Man. Power. It's like, don't nobody, don't get, don't get no juice off of that. <laughs> Right, he's now saying this book, he said, this is a troublemaker's book in this case here. This is your book. Telling me that's my book. It's a book called Proofs of a Conspiracy by John Robinson. History of Jacobism. They have all kind of precious documents there. Uh, again, you're free to use cameras and other things. There are many of these in many cities, and we need to all put them together. Those key streets, those symbols, those artifacts, the Masonic Temple here on Wheelshare, Crenshaw, the Black Street and the White Street coming together. Uh, it needs to be put into something. I shot the outside before, but it's loaded. Even the murals, them whole tap to George Washington. That's some heavy shit now. Oh, yeah, by John Robinson. Don't see they tried to kill this dude. <laughs> Try to kill this dude. 
Bruce Allen Robinson. I got this book in the modern version. He acts like you can't get the book. Proofs of that conspiracy. The conspiracy is against God and man. By John Robinson, I work for one of them little companies and shit. George Washington and anti masonry What's this trying to say? They have much, many books on all books against masonry they have. No. At, at every mention. I wasn't that this guy brings up. This is now at the end, I'm asking them about the last night of the convention and some things that the Boule people said. I'm interviewing Ed in the Hebrew outside of the... The, 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 the tour guide dries up on us said, y'all ain't left yet. And he's kind of wondering why we're still there when everybody's left the building and stuff. The uh, apprehension that um, our kind of the, the cock was raising was that um, he had heard that there was a room. Can you hear that? And one individual in particular who sends people into relay functions or meetings to take notes, um, to take pictures. And he was just concerned that um, Karen and I were members of this group and he wanted to be certain that we weren't members of this particular group, which we assured him that we weren't. And he had stated also that he heard some people on the radio talking against the brule and saying that this group was, he started to say anti-black and he caught himself and then he changed it to anti-establishment. So that was a concern that um, that he was raising. Did he seem to emphasize that the brule was connected somehow to the to the establishment? He, that, that was the impression that, that he gave us. Yeah. Uh, back to this uh, disturbance. Oh, hey, you had seen this man over several days, correct? Yeah, that's correct. But none of the other days had he mentioned to you any apprehension of any disturbance? No, not at all. In fact, you shot pictures on the boat one night. Was he on your boat? Uh, no, he wasn't. He wasn't on our boat. Not that I remember. Okay, but uh, you had shot the pictures on the boat one night and were there all <coughs> the days before. Exactly. He had never approached you in any of that time? No, no, he had In fact, it was indicated that the sire archon of Baltimore, Neil, uh, what's his name? Neil Neil Muldrew, that he was concerned that nothing happened in his area? Yeah, he was concerned. Um, our Colin Cox expressed that anything that would happen at the, um, the program over the last week would, re would reflect negatively on the uh, Baltimore, Baltimore Gamma chapter, and um, they wanted to prevent that at all costs. And uh, and he felt edgy in particular that night. He, he, he expressed uh, some concern, extra concern, that night that um, there were elements present who may uh, try to disrupt the uh, festivities. Mm. Or elements coming. Or elements are soon, soon to be on, on their way, exactly. Uh, what were your impressions of the Boulay Convention there? This is the first time you've had a chance to see uh, the uh, rich and privileged. I believe you got to uh, take a picture with the Grand Sire Archon and even saw the Sire Archon of Los Angeles, where you're from. Um, that, that's correct. The Sire Archon, uh, who happens to be my first lieutenant, is uh, Dr. Lawrence Paxton. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, we took a picture with Hugh uh, Perkins. Watch the gloves. Uh, 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 <laughs> took a picture with um, Dennis Archer, one of the new inductees from the city of Detroit. And uh, my new also gave me a very dirty look. <laughs> Along with Vernon Jordan and the Sire Archon, Grand Sire Archon, you yeah, were yeah. uh, My initial impression, Steve, was that this was a very um, snobbish, um, I don't want to say anti-black, although that was the uh, impression that I finally got, especially after being at the ball, at the ball with the people basically looking through you and not at you and not wanting to speak to you. Um, it was an air of... You know, just looking through you like there, there was no person, there was no person, no, no communication going on. It was just basically just looking at you as if, what are you doing here? And that was the bad impression that I got. It was, it was really disgusting to me. Did you see anybody wearing African garb at all? No, not not in any form. I, I saw some people wearing uh, kufis, a couple of the the, um, the archons wearing kufis, and not not really anything much more than that, which I think. Well, oh, at the picnic there were there were people who had uh, some piece on, but not anything in full African wear, which I would totally would have disgusted me because it would have been totally contrary to um, their actions and their behavior over the past week. Uh, anything else of note you'd like to make? Uh, did you uh, notice that there was an absence of all of the big names, the John Johnsons, the George uh, Johnsons, the uh, Earl Graves, the um, uh, Tom Bradley, the Wilson Good? Uh, the Austin Hastings, uh, most of the prominent and notable Boulay members, uh, Asa Hilliard, uh, who else? Uh,
we could get uh, 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 most of it. Well, you know, Stephen, I'm glad you brought the uh, Vernon Jordan speech uh, up because that was what really led me to understand the hypocrisy with which the Boulé is operating under. Where Vernon Jordan stressed in his speech how the Boulé needed to get back and uh, help mourn the community, and then to have uh, Hugh Perkins follow him and say, isn't it great to be here? You won't find a better collection of, of, of black people uh, in the country or anywhere. So I saw the, this, this contradictory in, this, in, in that beginning day and just the attitude of the people and um, just the whole atmosphere, you know, and the whole mock European. I mean, it was basically they were um, black people walking around with white masks. I mean, the whole the whole circumstance of the thing was uh, really repulsive to me. Right, so let me stop it. Ed is very good about that. He's very good in the conclusion. But let me tell you a little bit about what Vernon Jordan said. These are notes that I recreated from my friends that went inside while I maintained the position in the lobby. I kept a seat in the lobby on the couch so that any activity that we took proactive, uh, I mentioned uh, Saturday night we did, uh, for a while, take their sign-in sheets and their uh, financial reports and other things we took. Everything they had on the table, Vernon Jordan started getting down. Everybody ran in the room to hear what he was saying. And we just scooped that nice big old blue cloth table clean and got out of the hotel with the goods and copied everything so you could have it. We, don't you want it? Yeah. Yeah, sure, you're right. Do you know the strategy? It's a bull guard. Yes, Brother Ed. Was there any aftermath with brother, with brother Dave and, and the other brothers in Baltimore after it was over with? And I was talking to that guy, I don't know what he does, but he was a guy that I was talking to the most, and I didn't get a chance to ask him, you know, how he actually... Well, since they don't know them, it'd be kind of hard for me to explain it, but I'll get to a little part about that, because that, that, I'm going to play that part coming up. Look, again, we get to Karen and Hebrew. Uh, uh, Vernon Jordan, these are some of the statements he made in his opening address. This was the main uh, move. Uh, our young people uh, seem to be listening to these people. Who are these people? Uh, one of the things that concerns me is that on college campuses, people with hateful speech and anti-Semites. Uh, the only things that uh, get me uh, really a while is when they use the word Jew. He goes through a big thing about how good Jewish people were and how... The danger is that young people are listening to what he calls the messengers of hate. He says, Archon Du Bois in 1905 said that we are the talented 10th. If, if Du Bois were here, he would say things are good and sort of bad. Talented 10th is not doing all of the things they could do for their community. Du Bois would say, but that is not too late. That's false, because in 1948, Du Bois declared that the concept of the talented 10th did not work. And, and that because it did not work, was it something you wanted to get Brother, brother Ed to take care of you if you want something? Uh, that the talented attempt did not work, and that the boule was a contradiction. And he was, a, I can show you his list, where well, he was terminated from the boule based upon having served it for so many years, used by it, then being rejected when he had no role in transforming the post-war United Nations uh, uh, world order. So he goes through a thing about Du Bois would not have given up hope on them. Uh, for it is for us to do the things we're supposed to do. He then went on a thing and talked about the Freak Nick. You know what the Freak Nick is? That's a big Greek outing in Atlanta, Georgia. I mean, it's 100,000 black youth there for a couple of days, and they call it a Freak Nick. And I mean, they just lay all out in the streets of Atlanta, and they, they got really worried. Also, they had Virginia Beach. You remember when the Little Rebellion went down to Virginia Beach? Well, now the whites, you know, the blacks don't go there no more because the whites beat them with, with everything they could beat them with, treat them like dogs. And these were the fraternities and sororities that took millions of dollars there on particular weekends or spring breaks. Well, now on spring break, they have Freak Nick. And he talked about... One Atlanta papers did a story about how over $20 million was being spent during Freaknik. So he goes through a little commentary telling the audience about why didn't the Freaknik spend none of their money on black people. Now, like Brother Ed will say, and it's easily known, well, you sitting up in the Hyatt. You eating everything the Hyatt got. You going to Saxmith Avenue for uh, uh, an agenda item. For the women, you you supporting everything white. You spend millions of dollars in all the white hotels. 
how can you bring up the freak nick? And the audience was going wild as he said, why are you having freak nicks? There were no seminars at the freak nick. He goes on to talk about how they didn't have seminars, they didn't have health surveys, they didn't do, they didn't do immunization. Uh, he says, uh, um, uh, uh, talking about, uh, about the uh, freak nick, uh, the analogy of the freak nick versus whites uh, who go to Fort Lauderdale. Uh, and how Freaknik's is not constructive. Uh, neither seemed to be very concerned. Uh, he said he was at a men's day in the mid '70s. Oh, he, oh, he said he was he said he was coming from South Africa in the '80s uh, 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 to come back into America from South Africa. He was with uh, he was with uh, uh, Franklin Thomas, who's the head of the Ford Foundation. And he said the South African government stopped him going out of the country and said, uh, "What do you have? Open up your luggage." And he says, we don't have any drugs, we don't have any this. He said, I don't, he said, I don't want to know if you have anything but any books. Do you have any books? Do you have any tapes? And Vernon Jordan goes into this long spiel about the power of ideas and how the South African government wasn't worried about drugs. They weren't worried about weapons. They were worried about ideas that would free their Negroes from their plantation relationship that they're enjoying right now. And so he, th that's a worry. And so I turn to you and say, as a group of people uh, who have been insinuated to by many others that to get into this or to get into that or to think about this or to talk about that is a waste of time, understand that the top Negroes know the power of ideas. Ideas are the motivators for motion. Too often we've acted without thinking. Everyone wants to rush us to action, and I'm worried because I don't believe we have that little black book which states our local enemy so that we can be effective with our action. Yeah, but it, it, that he drew that analogy I thought was uh, excessively interesting. Uh, they were constantly self-praising. They constantly played themselves up as the greatest thing. He said, uh, uh, when Dennis Archer spoke, he said, we are the talented Tim, and I'm just glad to be here. Uh, Vernon Jordan said that uh, we the talented Tim, uh, we are our best able and the only ones able to save the black race. Uh, let me repeat that for you again. <laughs> that we are best able and the only ones able to save the black race. Uh, isn't that great to know that the buffer, the overseer, considers himself salvation line. No Harriet Tubman in this analysis. No Martin Delaney. No Nat Turner. This is uh, this is an overseer's uh, strategy, and it and it believes that eventually you can go from overseeing to sharecropping, and and this is progress. <laughs> no, I mean this is really we're reduplicating mistakes made in the past. Uh, now uh, uh, and quickly, uh, um, the general tone again was always uh, the talent attempt. They must have said it uh, a point many times. Here's a comment. Who are these self-appointed messiahs of hate? Why is the media rushing to cover them and their views? And we are intolerant of their views. We will never tolerate ethnic racism. Then he quotes Frederick Douglass. I know the rights uh, uh, or race. Or he said, I know no other right or race that's greater than humanity. That humanity buzz line. That to be human is the ultimate ecstasy. Freedom can wait. Um, also, um, uh, they went to back to the Du Bois analogy uh, uh, that they will never, uh, uh, talking about how the press will never cover blacks in a positive light. They don't show the cooperation between blacks and Jews enough. Now, they're in the room, it's all black people in there, and he in there campaigning for Jewish people. I mean, they're not even there. They're not even there. Right, he's on his job. Remember, Vernon Jordan now is the only black who is on the Bilderberger Group Trilateral Commission and is on the uh, board of the Council on Foreign Relations. Uh, now, um, I said, have the 10% forgotten the right to lead the best and the brightest? Have we the 10% forgotten our right to lead the best and the brightest? Our right. Who gave them that right? The honky did. Carnegie. Mellon, Rockefeller, Astor, DuPont, Rockefeller, Rothschild gave them the right 
That's in the white finance Negro leadership versus Marcus Garvey. Uh, just uh, real fascinating. Uh, that was uh, among, among the other things. Also, they mentioned that the, you, you had to have the secret handshake and know the password to get into the business meeting that was held after that meeting. Remember I mentioned earlier they had three boats. Uh, boat number one, boat number two, and boat number three when they went on the boat ride. And that boat number one had a full orchestra. Boat number two had a trio. And boat number three had a DJ. Yeah. So that within the boule there was a there was a hierarchy within itself. On the yard there was a yard amongst the yard. So that we understand that it's not all peace and tranquil because they're all together in the same room. Uh, now I gotta show you just a couple more pieces here on the video uh, camera. This is now me questioning Brother Hebrew on uh, how it was that they knew there was a protest coming. You had a successful Boulay conference? He really wants to be in the Boulay. He said his mother was one of the original founders of Jack and Jill. He's from uh, Altadena, California. He's a graduate of Howard University, engineering. Mm. Right, he used to work at McDonnell Douglas. Right, still uses the credit union. I think he's trying to take, uh, I think he's trying to use me as a fall guy for something that uh, obviously uh, didn't go over too well in his opinion. Uh, at least for his sake, on, a, for, on his, from his perspective, in a, in a positive way from his perspective, but in a negative sense from the bottom ten who were trying to, uh, who were trying to uh, uh, reach above their uh, petty differences. Uh, so what do you think of the Boulay Convention? Well, um, I think the Boulay Convention, like uh, most uh, black events uh, that take place in this country, uh, Martin, uh, the uh, Malcolm X Day special, the uh, uh, African Liberation Day, the Reggae Fest, uh, et cetera, et cetera, they have reached a point of saturation where now the people have uh, uh, no longer are interested really in attending these functions and galas and events for whatever reason this reflects a, a current trend in this country that now it's, it's becoming unsafe to uh, want your wealth. It's becoming unsafe to um, uh, 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 even flaunt your Africanness in a very superficial sense. So now everything is being taken to another level. And uh, I think what is going to come out of this is that a lot of the young people who are privileged, the uh, children of the privileged class of the black, you know, support them for black elite, are now beginning to question their parents' involvement with this organization called Boule. Did you see many of the Boule children at the event? Very few. Did you see any events for the children? Uh, there were no events for the children other than a hospitality suite and a play for the children, which uh, ironically was called uh, the, the Wizard of Oz. The Wiz, the Wiz. They sent their children to a play, The Wizard of Oz, which I've always relayed to you was a masonically laid out analysis of the big man and the big man's protectors. And to get there and to see it in the program, it's right in the program too. Uh, when they list the youth activities, you'll see your second bullet meeting. The Wiz, right here, on Wednesday, July 13th. Well, those who got the program around. Yeah, that's true. They said to me at the Grand Sire Archive, they said to me, Augustus, you think he gonna that, get in? Uh, uh, keep up that's your right. education and we'll be watching you. Look forward to that day. He can be called. Now I bring up how he, how he tricked on me.
the scholarship. Oh, no, I didn't get any offers uh, <laughs> anything. No, just um, keep up the good work. <laughs> oh, what no work was y'all doing? <laughs> we were doing the work for them, that's for sure. <laughs> they were just saying, hey, isn't it nice to see young black guys, you know, stay out of trouble? Uh, but then they knew you was with me, the grandson archive know you was with me. He never, he never well, wanted that's the you the nature of the at, at the stop down. He know you know me. That's right. He right. asked you about me. He know you sitting next to me. He know I'm sitting out there. And never once does he confront you in an adversarial way. And he know I'm right there with you. Mm. I think that alludes and uh, what just demonstrates the non-confrontational nature of Boulay, uh, being that their motto is not a perfect world. But let's go back to Ed. You were confronted by the Boulay. You were asked if you were a part of a group. Yes. Who, with some local chapter members, was on to storm the Boulay meeting that night. That's correct. Something that only two people knew. <laughs> <laughs> we were approached about um, when we part of a group who intended to disrupt the proceedings. And he said that they've been studying this for a while? Yeah, they said that we've been we've uh, known about this person or this, this group and the, the people who are in disagreement with them as, as a whole. You know, the local group, the people who write it, and this one individual who we couldn't get them to name, who they actually refused to name. And when we asked to give the name, he said it wasn't important who this one in particular individual, this particular individual was. And we can understand why they wouldn't name this individual. They were saying, well, who is it causing all this trouble? And I'd just like to add that uh, it's interesting on a, on, a, on a closing note that as you have risen the stakes, as you've gone deep into the penetration, when you had first asked a black undergraduate, fraternities and sororities to begin the process of presenting a uh, referendum. Oh, that's another thing. We never saw none of them there this weekend either. It's kind of like tributaries. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, so I didn't think to, to change their esoterica and their symbolism into the comedic or Egyptian symbolism to push beyond the Negro turn of century Greek, black Greek uh, esoterica, and now you're going into a whole other demonstration. It's, it's interesting to see now that as the stakes have risen, as you have uh, uh, so eloquently stated on CNN, I mean C SPAN too that you would be there and gone all over the country uh, and made these announcements on, on radio station that there's going to be a Copley Boulay conference in Boston on July 8th to the 15th, that they were on edge. It, it was probably a very tense and edgy atmosphere that they could not relax and have a good time and drink their liquor. The ship was on edge. Yeah, I got that feeling they, they got a little edgy. They got edgy, so it wasn't like they can just relax in the easy chair. This is what I don't understand. When they couldn't confront it over it, they ignored it, and the only thing that was said was two things. One by Dolores Wilson. I'm saying, what I'm saying is that they could have confronted me. I was there. Why didn't they choose to attack me then? Since they were all there together, there was a few of us. They chose not to engage. And got Clarence Woods who says, yeah, we heard you was coming. You're going to stop some digging shit up here in the hotel. What's up? As he began to tell me, he'd get all the Chicago folks together. And then began to go introduce them to me to make sure they knew I was here personally. And then he tried to use me to scare them. Mm -hmm. Interesting enough, but uh, it also was uh, noted that, that, that there were not a lot of people interested in coming to the Boule Conference, even though they were, they weren't. And even though they want to know, they really didn't want to know. And I think that the way I presented it to the people, it was that something would happen confrontational. And because of that, many people didn't want to be there when fighting came. I alluded to the fact that they didn't open the door. We opened the door up, but they didn't lock no door. All the doors were readily open, and never was anybody challenged for going in and out of the door, though they were challenged in the hallway at a critical moment when they thought something critical was going to happen. And only two people knew about it. Me. <laughs> and myself. <laughs> okay, so what do we get new? What Boulay got to this? We get we get the Boulay. Now that I Boulay, pushed them uh, to the point, I ease up off of them. Right. You have to understand it's about fighting too. What you have to do, you can't send anybody away because they have a right to be wherever they are. And sometimes he do something right, and sometimes he do dumb shit. 
I said, man, don't get on the phone ass, you know. I don't even know what the fuck you talking. I ain't even been to the bullet convention. <laughs> <laughs> so I call him after. I mean, it wasn't you, though. I got the camera on you, but it wasn't you after. But we got the bullet program with all the updated bullet numbers in it. Okay. Now I need to show you this real quick. Uh, here is a... Uh, 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 we uh, showed the other night uh, some of the stuff from the Boule Convention, and I got to get a little of this into the videotape. I think what may be coming up now is around the picnic area. Uh, this is the uh, uh, this is the that's a right here. Uh, this is the thirst truck at the picnic. The thirst truck you can see is a huge truck with three Miller beer cans, tw about eight feet tall, that brought the beer. It was unlimited beer over in the corner. This is the Miller beer truck. <laughs>
camera. This is a guy who's going to waste his disposal system from New Jersey. So he shoots this film with Kurt Smoke, and he turns to Hebrew. He says, he gives him $40 and says, now send me a copy of that tape. He says, oh, I got another tape I shot yesterday. I'll send you that one too. So he gives him $60, which means he's taking $60 from this guy as an excuse for me to give him the tapes to mail them to him. is their colors again. See the bellies, I always see the big bellies, a lot of big bellies there. As a mayor again, this guy is, uh, he's from Detroit, Joseph Harris of Iola chapter, Detroit, Michigan. is a skull and bones from Yale. He's a Rhodes Scholar from Oxford. He's now on the Trilateral Commission. And he's a boule. Uh, Brother Ostenu is about to go around and take a collection for Brother Copley. Please, I need your support. Do what you can do. After this, we'll take a collection for the good life and do what you can do for them. For those that can, I appreciate your support. I've got more film to show, but I'm just going to have them do it while we're doing the film because I want to cover all the bases. If somebody wants to write a check, you're welcome to. Put no name in the page in order of. Somebody surprised me. Write $500 check, $100 check, $3,000 check. That don't bounce. Uh, again, uh, interestingly enough about this convention, if we had had, if we were better able to finance ourselves, we could have blitzed them. We could have put out information on them. We could have put demonstrators around them. We could have blocked and locked them down real hard. Sometimes the right thing to do is not enough motivation for people. They need money. And so we could have, we could have bought up some good, strong disagreement. Now this is a guy, A. Paul Knott. He's a 25-year member. He went to college. Brother, if you want to make a donation, you're welcome to. Anybody's got to go. Uh, I, I don't want people to leave before the donation basket get to them. But then again, if you don't have anything to donate, I guess that's just as well. He makes a point of saying how the organization don't do all it should do. And the guy says, this is the talented 10th. He said, this is the talented 1,000. He's a doctor in Chicago, uh, A. Paul Knott, and, and uh, the guy says, well, who's that camera on you? He said, oh, no, let the camera stay on. This is for history. This is a friend of ours, Marilyn, that came with us. She started checking him on some stuff. seem to be too well respected at this program. Talking about a guy named Vernon Jarrett, who was one of my arch enemies in Chicago. They started the youth program for the Boule. Also the Axo, they started that too. Okay, let me push them on. I got to go back and uh, show you the beginning. Those of you who weren't here uh, the other nights, uh, uh, I need to show you uh, on the record. And, and he gives some interesting dialogue, a very honest dialogue he tells about his own organization. Uh, this is interesting. This is at the end of the program. The buses came to pick him up to take him back to the hotel, which was a couple of blocks away. And uh, look at it. They were fighting to get on the bus. Like any other Negroes, when there ain't been so many seats and your feet hurt, they fought and pushed each other just like all the rest of the Negroes do when the bus show up. The most powerful black people in America. Can you imagine? Okay. Now, the uh, 
the program that's going around, uh, for the record, I sent the program around the room so that those of you could get a look at it. Uh, again, this is a picture of the harbor in Baltimore. It's a very big cultural deal there, uh, the Baltimore Harbor. Uh, right down the street from this, in fact, uh, they have a uh, $400 million research building called the Christopher Columbus Research uh, Project. They need to figure out what that's about. Uh, here in the beginning uh, is the opening letter, again, from the Grand Sire Archon. I read this out Saturday night, and I know I have about a couple of videos left from... Uh, how many videos left from uh, Saturday night, Ed? Four? We have four videos left from Saturday night for those who are interested. Uh, here was the list of the Grand Officers and Executive Committee of the Boulay from 92 to 94. They were Hugh Perkins, Grand Sire Archon, uh, Dr. Hargrove Wooten, who was the Grand Sire Archon elect. He's coming on board now. Benjamin Major is the immediate past Grand Sire Archon. Uh, Harvey Russell is the Grand Grammatuous Executive Secretary. Uh, Manfred Byrd, who was school superintendent in Chicago, is the Grand Thesaurus. Uh, Dr. Matthew Carter, who does the Boulay Journal, he's the Grand Grafter. Uh, Mr. Avery Goodrich is the Grand Leading Archon. I'm reading you literally their positions. Uh, Dr. Charles Tollett is the Grand Lecturing Archon. Dr. Hobart Jarrett is the Grand Historian. Godfrey Moraine is the General Counsel. Mr. Herbert Whiteman, who is the Vice Chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Herbert Whiteman is the Chairman of the Audit and Budget Committee. Uh, the Honorable Revis Ortiq is the Chairman of the Social Action Committee. Uh, Gus Ridgell is the Chairman of the Committee on Regions. Anthony Hall uh, was the Chairman of the Constitution and Bylaws Committee. Anthony Hall is now the Grand Sire Archon elect, uh, winning the election that was held. Uh, the Honorable Robert Franklin is the past Grand Sire Archon, which makes him the Chairman of the Committee on Growth and Expansion. Uh, Dr. Clifton Warner is the Chairman of the Long Range Planning Committee. There are also sire archons who chaired the Northeast Region, Southeast Region, Central Region, Western Region, and Pacific Region. Andrew Byers of the Northeast Region, Gilbert Mason of the Southeast Region, James Williams of the Central Region, Leonard Lawrence of the Western Region, uh, who's from uh, Gamma Phi, uh, and Dr. John Edwards uh, of the Pacific Region. Uh, here are the various committees of the Boule, uh, of which I read you, and their chairmen and the respective committee members of those committees. Uh, that's very important in the naming the names process. Here is a list of every uh, chapter of the Boule in its Greek uh, name, Alpha, Beta, uh, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, etc., all the way down. It represents the, uh, uh, by order of induction, the last chapters just coming in are Nassau, Bahamas, Sweetport, Louisiana, Mobile, Alabama, Las Vegas, Nevada, Denver, Colorado, Beaumont, Texas, South, Southern New Jersey, Albany, Georgia, Tyler, Texas, Greenville, South Carolina. Those are some of the most recent chapters of the Boule uh, which have been formed. Uh, here's a list of the Boule Foundation, uh, the Board of Trustees for the Boule Foundation uh, from 92 to 94. Showing the chairman is Robert V. Franklin of Toledo, Ohio. The vice chairman of the Boulay Foundation is Thomas Shopshire of Los Angeles, California. Shopshire again is also head of the of the uh, of the guardsmen here in Los Angeles and is uh, one of the key families of third generation Boulay uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, here are the 25 year members. They were all given pins. If you had been in over 25 years. Uh, one member, in fact, got a 50-year pin. Half a century pin went to two men, Epsilon of Washington, D.C., Alfred Davis, and William McKnight. Uh, a. Paul Knott, the man you saw up there earlier, he got a 25-year uh, pin. Here's a letter from the mayor, uh, Kurt Smoke of the of, uh, of uh, uh, Kurt Smoke of Baltimore, uh, giving honor to them uh, for coming to Baltimore. Uh, there's also a letter in here from Kwesi and Fumi, who is not a Boulay member, but did send a letter uh, to them, uh, there's the governor of Maryland, big time Mason, Governor Schaefer. I mentioned to you his Masonic activities on past trips. And here is uh, uh, a letter in here from Kwesi and Fumi, somewhere in here, uh, giving thanks to them. Here it is here, uh, giving thanks to them on his official stationery. Uh, the Brothers of Sigma Pi Phi represent some of the nation's most intimate uh, African American trendsetters and visionaries, is his statement. It's interesting that he would state that. Uh, though he's not a member, he has the chairman of the Black Caucus. Uh, many ceremonies are done. Uh, they had a picture of the Grand Boulay meeting that was last held in Baltimore at Morgan College. And you need to know that Morgan College is J.P. Morgan.
College. And that many of those black schools like Spelman, Rockefeller, bear the names of their white corporate donors. And their loyalty to them is absolute. They do not allow students to speak against people who they look at as part of the donor population. Uh, here were the specific details of each and every forum. Uh, maybe at the end of this, Jamal, you can shoot the, uh, shoot the, um, some of the, uh, this into the uh, camera. Here's a pose of the Baltimore boule. Uh, interesting, you look at some of how the hands are held, how the feet sit. Uh, when you look at pictures of them posing, uh, they listed the events for the Archhouses. These are the women. Uh, they're Archhouses. Uh, the men are Archons, and they also had youth program. Here the women's uh, had a fashion show. They had, had fashions by Saks Fifth Avenue. There are many uh, very powerful sisters who do uh, garment presentations of Afrocentric nature, none of which uh, were here. This was a Saks Fifth Avenue thing. Uh, they had uh, a few workshops on a few uh, irrelevant topics. Uh, basically, uh, having fun was what they uh, predominated. This is Vernon Jordan, of course, who is a black Bilderberger who's on, out there with Clinton now. And also, they had in the uh, book, which was very important, the list of all new inductees, the list of all new inductees to the Boulay from 92 to 94. Uh, across the country, all listed by chapter. And of course, I had mentioned to you earlier that there is uh, Asa Hilliard having been accepted 12-23-93 uh, in the Atlanta chapter. Also, uh, Elvin Hayes. You remember Elvin Hayes, the Big E? He was inducted into the Houston chapter. Uh, one of the few, again, uh, sports people, Hank Aaron, Arthur Ashe was. Uh, there are not, uh, nor have there been many uh, sports people. Uh, now, I uh, Brother Astinu, I need you to bring me that bag, and I'm going to pass a hat for the good life. Uh, for those of you who could make a contribution to them, I would appreciate it. Uh, it'll help them share with the people who uh, have to stay over. Uh, if you can, you do what you can. This is uh, uh, what, what is always asked. I want to put into the record uh, Bill Cosby uh, into this tape. Uh, Brother Jamal, yeah, there you are. I want to put into the record uh, him... Oh, oh, let me just do this. This is the front of the Boulay Convention. Uh, you needed to see uh, Vernon Jordan and those others. <laughs> This is uh, here in the lobby of the Boulay Convention as the Boulay members start coming in as the Grand Sire Archon uh, talking over the agenda uh, with uh, another of the key members. Uh, I want to show you uh, inside the room and to the record. We got uh, more of the front part of this in yesterday's video, I mean in Saturday's video. So it was on that poster board that we got an idea where those three squares were coming from. Uh, in fact, I can just turn this on and turn the view down. You'll tell me when it gets to the right spot. Where's the view?
this was not one of the biggest attended meetings, you can get an idea of what kind of flock they got. That's a lot of money they spent that weekend, like the Frick did. Now when, that, when he started clapping, all the people ran inside. You see what he said? You know you outside the room, you hear somebody you run in? That's when we scoop them tables. So he got another plaque, and plaque has the Grecian Sphinx on it. Did the other uh, book come make it around? Give the good life back to Sister Ife. Uh, uh, is the other book around? The, uh, yeah, you can let the brother see it. Okay, it's no problem. I just want to make sure they're circulating. Uh, here's another uh, book. I'll pass this one around. Please make sure you come to the front. Uh, who else didn't see this program book? Okay. Is that Doug Wilder? Yes, Doug Wilder there. He's a Boule member, yes. He was one of the few notable Boule members that were publicly uh, visible. Uh, most of the prominent ones did not show up because there was fear that there would be trouble. And many of our people didn't show up because there was a fear that there would be trouble. They're getting ready to give honor to the four black members of the Clinton administration at a boule. Epsi at Agriculture, Ron Brown at Commerce, uh, Tobo West as a, a Deputy Secretary of the Army, and uh, who the one I'm missing? F.C. Brown, oh, Lee, Lee Brown, uh, drugs are. What about Green? Uh, Ernest Green, he is a bull late too. So you come, uh, used to be uh, with Carter, Secretary of Terry. He's now uh, being brought up for a position. Uh, for some, they just, oh, yeah, they appointed him head of the African Development Bank. I'm going to mention him Wednesday night. This just was in the Jet Magazine last issue that Ernie Green had been appointed such. Also in Jet, and the issue with... Uh, with uh, Janet Jackson, I mean, uh, Robin Gibbons on the cover was a little picture of Vernon Jordan at the Boule Conference posing uh, with several others and about a paragraph mentioning that he had spoke, etc., etc. Uh, Robin Gibbons is on the cover of the jet that has the Boule uh, report in it. For just a paragraph. Anyway, that's just uh, to get into the record of that. And one last thing I have to get into the record is uh, Bill Cosby uh, going into the secret chamber. I want to get that on this videotape. It just takes one minute. Uh, going into the secret chamber um, uh, using the word boule to gain access. This was in a remake of I Spy. Ironically, uh, the first black road scholar was a boule member named Elaine Locke. Uh, and What's interesting about that is that I have alleged that I have alleged that Elaine Locke becoming the first Boule member was a part of a deal between the Boule and the Rose Rothschild Secret Society to confirm their inner association. And that Elaine Locke, I have a picture of him up here uh, uh, that I want to show you. Uh, this is Elaine Locke. He is so-called the father of the concept of the Harlem Renaissance, which was an artificial portraying of White's role uh, in the constitution of blacks and the art and culture to avoid being in the black Africa. Uh, a Jet Magazine article appeared uh, a little while back saying black fraternity donates archives to Fisk University. Sigma Phi Phi, the nation's oldest black Greek professional fraternity, recently, come on y'all, recently donated uh, its entire archives to Fisk University in Nashville. So we believe that at some moment in time we can get to Fisk and get into and find those archives. Now, interestingly enough, I spoke at Fisk University. Before I knew everything about the Boulay, and as I'm reading the list in the auditorium, and I've mentioned this to you all, because you got Fisk, Meharry, and Tennessee State right there together, right in the main auditorium of Fisk, right across the wall, are nine Grecian sphinxes on each side of the wall. Right in the auditorium there, and I was speaking in it. And uh, I got to pull that video up because there was an older man there who was a Mason. And when I read off those names of the Boulay people from that axis down there, he knew the history of every one and gave some very insightful information. And all it says is that the Boulay now has made their archive at Fisk University. Fisk President Walter Leonard, who was a member of the fraternity, accepted the gift of the Sigma Pi Phi papers on behalf of the university. The archives of Sigma Pi Phi consist of historical artifacts dating back to the founding of the fraternity in 1904, including the original charter of the fraternity. Every organization of an oath taker must have a charter. Each charter must be constituted by an organization before it. Who, 
Who, where did the first Boule chapter get authorization from? Skull and Bones, Phi Beta Kappa. Uh, and that includes the original char uh, uh, charter of the fraternity correspondence files, minutes, and programs of meetings of the Boule. So we just know for the record that that's there. Last time I was here, brother brought this research. He said sire. See, the head of the Boule is called Sire Archon. Sire means a man of authority, a man of high rank. Now used only as a title of respect in addressing a king. Second definition, a male parent of an animal, a four-legged mammal. A four-legged mammal. Looks like the Grecian Sphinx. He looked up the word Archon. One of the nine chief magistrates of ancient Athens. One of the nine. And of course, nine is the significant number of Sigma Pi Phi. And lastly, I just want to enter this in the record. Many of you have seen this in the past. This is the opening. And no, CBS uses, watch this, watch these angles. And pyramids jump out. And CBS, you know, do a little thing with their eyes. This is, of course, the concept of the boule in specific of the white guy with the black guy assistant. The bearing of the young, the, the, the Caruso and Friday. His number one partner, that's the boule, it's a, a right to rule. And in this, Bill Cosby plays a Rhodes Scholar. He's a Rhodes Scholar assistant of Robert Culp, the tennis player. That's the way this originally came on. Now notice how he has to lie to his wife and so forth. It's an interesting unfolding. at this school, I'm going to go past that part. He then tells his wife, he, he gets a word that he got to go to the Boule convention. I mean, he has a word he got to no. check in. Um, we'll, we'll talk about this another time, okay? So he decides he's going to be there, now he's got to trick his wife. Let me uh, put him to Washington, D.C., please. Sometime soon? To Washington. Of course, there's Cosby is one of the 100 most influential. What's the connection between the Boule and the men and the 100 most influential? And how many of the women are in the four female fraternities? That must be affirmatively, affirmatively established. I forgot. And None dare call it treason. An article in Black Collegian, uh, January uh, 80, uh, December, January 81, 82. None dare call it treason. Black Greeks. Interesting dialogue. Uh, the forces of linguistic idiocy. Oh. I'm going to make a speech. They will have to cancel Frank and Margaret Westy. They were coming to dinner tonight. They eat too much anyway, honey. Mm -hmm. Now he's lying to his wife to get the gold to check in. And again, how many of you all saw this already? Okay, I just got to get it into the record, so just uh, bear with me a second. This is the last thing. Margaret. Hi, I'm glad you
layout there, showing the needle. It's a Masonic layout. It goes to the Department of Agriculture, which is EPSI or the Boule. Department of Agriculture. Now, hidden in there is a secret spy chamber. Parasite control. Parasite control. Wear their pen on the uh, left lapel. We're on assignment. Don't breathe on me. Subordinate gods 
uh, through through our tune to uh, bring uh, the world into existence. Interesting. 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 Yes. Uh, you know, on that one thing on the back, it is a square. It's, on the back of what? Uh, you know, the thing with three. By yeah. Where's three that by, at? The, uh, the three by three. The, uh, where is the uh, sister? The blue one. Sister. Sister. You got two books in there? How you gonna look at both of them? Thank you. Sir. No, the I want you to hold up that. Uh, Mag hold up the back. I want to show it on the back. There see, you go. it's a square with area. See, it's three by three, which means the area is nine. I mean, that's right, right, I right, mean, right. right. They're mean. definitely making nine the point. Nine is the point. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other than that, I don't know. All right. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. Yes. Quickly. This is the last last statement. Is there any correlation between these secret organizations and what the Christians project as the Antichrist wants to come along? And the Christians uh, who have used Christianity to colonize countries have an askew uh, perception of the God thing. And I give uh, limited credence to the depth of their perception and consideration of how they use their religion to be colonial, colonializers. And uh, so they never, uh, no religious value ever stopped them from taking uh, Hispanola or Jamaica or Haiti or uh, this place, whatever, whatever it was, they went to take it. There were no adverse feelings. No religious tenant protected the people. And so the reason I say that is, is that their calling of the Antichrist is really sort of a self-reflective dialogue. <laughs> if the devil showed up, taking another man's country would be one of the things he'd do. You know, see the movie The Mission. It's about how the missionary works with the military to clear a country. Uh, okay, uh, I appreciate, uh, don't forget this, I'll be on the front page tomorrow morning at 4.30 a.m. to 5.30 a.m. Uh, I will be here Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We got a real good program on Africa 94. You won't want to miss Africa 94. And on Thursday night, uh, and I don't know the location of AMU, <laughs> Oh, what happened? Can't do it Thursday? Yeah, 2614 West Florence. 2614 West Florence. I'm going to redo the Dr. Collett lecture. Uh, updated. Yes, Brother Ed. The latest audio on the boule uh, that's back there is the Compton boule uh, or... Yes, Brother? Yeah, the list is... Uh, might be back there in a folder. It's in a uh, express mail envelope back there. It's three different sheets. So you have to pull out a sheet. Uh, don't forget Wednesday and then Thursday. Uh, I appreciate uh, all of you coming out. Don't forget to support Brother Jamal here. He's got some tapes from me on the front page uh, today and other days and other programs that are available. Please remember all the Boulay tapes are on sale. The Boulay videotapes are on sale for only $25, including the $35 Boulay tape. Uh, please, I need your support. I'm going to see you in the back of the room.